This episode is powered by Poddex. Go to www.poddex.com and use the code TBL10 to get 10% off your purchase at checkout. Once again, that's www.poddex.com. Welcome to the Basement Lounge Podcast with your hosts, Mike Shea and Mike Wells. Sit back, grab a drink, relax. Let's see where the time takes us. Enjoy. It knows it like it's able to measure like how much breathing resistance it's getting. So it knows like if there's a leak or if I'm not breathing enough, so it needs to pump more air. But it can also detect when it's been like removed. Does so it? so it'll turn itself off. Huh. And it'll tell me and I it, it feeds to an it feeds to an app on my phone and it's like, okay, so you actually used it for it's okay, well I slept nine hours, but I used it for five and a half. So at some point it came off. <laughs> Shit. Yeah. I have to fucking super glue that shit. <laughs> well, it was the only it was the only uh, the only um, mask that would fit my giant fucking head. <laughs> you do have a fucking big head. I dude. do have a big fucking head. Wearing hats is a bitch. Um, I don't even wear hats. I wear tubs. <laughs> <laughs> I had to it, uh, and it's one that just only goes under my nose because none, uh, none none of the ones that fit around my face I can wear because I have facial hair, so it won't seal. Uh, and then I had to try five different masks and then five different nose pieces to find one that would actually fit. So they like, when you try those on, do they like set up to like put you in like a, like a dressing room and be like, okay, try this one on and I'll come out. <laughs> she did like, she'd leave, she'd bring one in, she'd put on the head, she'd adjust it. It's like, okay, how do you think, how does it feel? If I do this, no, okay, we'll take that one off. And it was like an eighties movie where it's like in the, the, the musical montage, shaking the head yeah. and then one comes out and everybody thumbs up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then you're like, what the fuck? And then, and then you're like, oh, wait a second. I'm walking on sunshine. <laughs> <laughs> what if that was like, not even, that was somebody orgasming in that song and go, oh, oh, oh. I think that's how the song goes. I don't fucking know. Anybody, everybody knows walking on, it's, it's one of those songs. Everybody knows the walking on sunshine. Nobody knows the other lyrics to that fucking song. It's like Cotton Eye Joe. Everybody knows. Where did you come from? Where did you go? Where did you come from, Captain and Joe? What are the other words to that song? Anybody know? Because it <laughs> blah blah blah. blah. <laughs> Shit, that's a good fucking point. Yeah. Fuck. Um. So yeah. So you had a, you had a good weekend. Uh. Uh. You, were you hosting? Or were you were you just featuring? featuring You're featuring. featuring for what? For Wendy Ferguson? Yeah, Wendy. Wendy is like a really good friend of mine. She's fucking hilarious and doesn't give like the oh, credit she, she she's deserves. The best. Yeah, she's fucking great. She's like two eight a dwarf yeah. and. <laughs> It's Which so funny because my grandma, gimmick. huh? It's a great gimmick. Oh yeah. Well, it's so funny because my my great grandma was like four eight, right? Yeah. And my my grandma came up to me. She's like, "So you're hosting for Wendy?" Blah blah. blah. I was like, "Yeah." She's like, "Well, tell grandma that you know, tell her that your great grandma's four eight. And I was like, "Okay." okay. I was like, "Well, like, okay, why does that?" Hey, Wendy, my grandma's well, twice as tall as you. Exactly. <laughs> I was like, "Well, she's two eight. So, <laughs> and my grandma was like, "Oh," and I was like, "Yeah." <laughs> Um, she, uh, I remember her, her and Joe Young, and I forget who else was involved, did some videos at DATV a few years back. I probably Luke Capasso, probably. I think it was probably like, it was, it was like Wendy travel, yeah, like fake yeah, the world yeah. and that was some funny shit. God, she's so fucking funny. I always used to, because we, when we did that, that, uh, that Christmas sh- toy drive show, I used to think it'd be funny as fuck if in that giant present box, like if we got Wendy to be on the show. Mm-hmm. And then, like, she just jumped out of the box. It's like, Wendy Ferguson, and just the box just opens, and she just fucking comes out of it. I won't tell you her opener. Her opener is, like, the best fucking opener, I think, on ever whenever she does a show. I wish I could tell it, but since it's her joke, I'm not. Yeah. But she has, like, the best fucking over- opener for her size, like, how tall she is. Yeah. And I'm just like, ha, ha, God damn, that's good. You know what pisses me off? I've never actually met her in person. Really? In six years of living here. I've We've never been at... Uh, at Wiley's at the same time. Wow. That's crazy, dude. Yeah, I it's complete I was thinking about that when 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 I saw the post about the show over the weekend and I was like I've never actually fucking like met what son of a bitch. Well, she's never headlined Wiley's. She's never actually headlined Wiley's for a weekend. Really? She's headlined like like one night shows or whatever, but okay. she's never done the whole weekend, you know. Yeah, it I, was weird, so I was like, all yeah, right. I've never been there at the same time as her. That's fucking and it just, it just hit me that that was true and i was like six years it is mm-hmm. weird yeah. i like how you like no comics but you've never met them yeah well because yeah. yeah, especially because there's such it, it, it's such a trend on facebook for guys in our circle it's like we see a name pop up it says you have 30 mutual friends who oh 
all the date and comics. Yeah, yeah. And then you just add them anyway, because <laughs> fuck it. <laughs> my favorite one, my favorite ones are like the hot the hot chicks that send you facebook things <sighs> yeah. and like you're like oh you have 13 i was like because you know it's a fake profile but i'm like right. what one of my friends <laughs> fell for this and every single time i'm like yep i kind of figured it would be you um, you usually you. luke capasso <laughs> <laughs> every time i'm like huh all right uh-huh. or don because don will just add everybody i know and then <laughs> i think all of them are russian spies every single one of them i don't know why i just feel like they're re- or they're trying to get my credit card information but i like fucking with them too <laughs> oh it's great well my thing was like well kyle steele's been doing that have you seen yeah, his posts yeah, yeah, on yeah, facebook yeah. he fucks with them <laughs> I, they fuck on my 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 comedy page my comedian not my personal page but my comedy page right. they messaged me on there too no shit and so one girl was like hey baby and i was like i'm a man <laughs> and she's like well it's just a greeting i was like like i said i'm a man and she was like and nothing ever <laughs> since then. so i wonder sometimes like just how automated those things are but also like that ai technology these days has gotten so fucking smart that it, it, you know with the with the predictive predictive answers and shit like that they know kind of like how kind of how to respond but you can get them stuck in a loop and that's the funniest shit <laughs> where it goes crazy where you're like no you give me your credit card information <laughs> that'd be fucking hilarious trapped in a paradox and and uh hear a fucking explosion somewhere in town <laughs> But the show, the shows went well this weekend. Well, Fridays was like, everybody did up and down. Mm-hmm. But it's like one of those shows, I don't like blaming the audience on everything. But like, the host was like, eh. I, my set was like, eh. Like, and then Wendy's the same way. And like, it's like when you, well, especially Wendy, because she's so funny. But when she does a joke that I know that kills, like I've never seen it not kill. Mm-hmm. And then they go, eh. I'm like, oh. Yeah. This isn't even our, this is just the audience. It's just whatever funk is in the room. Yeah, it was really weird. Like, you could feel like, the next day I talked to her, I was like, did, did like, the the show feel, the room feel tense before the show? She was like, yeah. And I was like, that's what, I got that feeling too. I sometimes think you can also judge that just based on the enthusiasm and like the clapping at the start of the show. Yeah. If the clapping feels polite, Mm-hmm. It's probably going to be a rough room. Yeah, agreed. If, if it feels like loud and enthusiastic and fast paced, probably going to do pretty good unless you just suck. Oh, absolutely. Uh, but yeah, you can usually when when whenever the whenever you know Karen or whoever goes on the mic and you know and says, here's your host, you know, and they're like, yeah, and you kind of like, you, you kind of get golf claps. You're just kind of like, oh, it's going to be a rough night. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Man, I well Friday well Friday that's what kind of felt like the golf clap. Yeah. Uh, Saturday night fucking show was amazing like everybody keith Irvin hosted it great i featured like my set was great when oh, he, keith, keith, keith was hosting yeah well keith gary henry hosted the first show sat friday okay for show friday but what happened something happened personal thing and he literally couldn't make it like okay. it was just like out of the blue so we had keith host and uh keith had a great set he set up perfectly i had him a great set i don't know good great i don't know what like it was a good great set whatever yeah. like no really any lulls or anything like that but what i loved about my set was two people complained to management <laughs> i got my material and i was like yes comedy's back baby <laughs> they just didn't like my material like I, they Jesus. were offended and i'm like you're fucking out of com- i mean don't get me wrong like i talk about shit that you're not supposed right. to like, talk like it's it's not out of the realm of possibility that you're one of your one or two of your jokes offended somebody yeah no <laughs> and i totally get that like i've been waiting for it yeah i've been totally waiting for it but you know that happened um but now that I mean like i'm sitting there like i that was a good to great set and uh, got off stage. People were like, yeah, when I got off, blah, blah, this and that. Then I go out on the thing. I was like, uh, so how did it like, you know, blah, blah, blah. Was, and this is the first time I've ever been like, so has, has anybody ever been a, like was somebody offended by my jokes? Right. I don't know why I've never asked that, but I had a feel, I just had a feeling for whatever reason. Right. And like, yeah, there's actually a couple that came out. <laughs> they, they hated your material. <laughs> they were super offended by one of your, your jokes. Wow. And I think that was, I think it was the abortion joke. Which one? <laughs> okay. Yeah. Which one? So I do my, my abortion jokes go like this. I was like, I'm atheist. Uh-huh. But I do pray. Mm-hmm. 
when I don't pull out on time. <laughs> I pray she gets an abortion. <laughs> and then usually that gets last. And so I'm like, oh, I was like, if you don't like that joke, you're going to fucking love the next two. <laughs> and so and I go, I get more aggressive with it. And I have a birthmark. It's a scar on my stomach from the hanger my mom used. Oh, I know that one. Oh. <laughs> if you don't like that joke, blame my mom. <laughs> if she would have succeeded, you would have never heard it. And I get him right there. And if anybody's not on board at that point, and this is where I crack yeah. them. I say, you guys know how hard it is to tell two abortion jokes in a row? <laughs> really fucking hard because <laughs> nobody wants you to keep them. <laughs> and that if by that point, if nobody, everybody's on board. Yeah. Like everybody's like, I even had a person that like fucking hates abortion jokes to go, God damn it. You got me. Like he literally came up to me. He's like, you got me in that last one. I fucking laughed hysterically. That's so fucking, that's great. But they gave her, they gave the couple free tickets to like a new show, another oh, show, great. which would be hilarious if I was also on. Oh my God. I hope so. <laughs> me too. They need to like, track the reservations and see like if that couple reserves seats yeah. again be like book Mike on that show <laughs> let him headline <laughs> I did like 30 35 minutes first time I've ever done that at like a club like that's that probably, wow club. that's real good yeah so no Wendy killed it crushed it uh they the couple even came up to Wendy after the show I was like you need to get like we liked everybody but that middle guy you need to get rid of him and she, she was like no he's my dude <laughs> that's great <laughs> Oh, that's great! And then who was who? Did, was there was there a because uh, it was Easter? Did they not have a uh, Wiley Sunday? No, week? Wiley Sunday is because of Easter, right? Okay, like that so yeah, it was. I mean, it was a fun weekend. I had good, good times. Did you do anything for your family? Do anything for Easter? I went over to my my aunts. Yeah. Everybody else is pretty much vaccinated. Oh, cool. Uh, me and my wife wore our masks the entire time. You guys still haven't gotten yours? We're both half vaccinated. Okay, yeah, I got yeah. my first one on Saturday. Yeah, I got my. Did you get Pfizer or Johnson? Pfizer. So I, what I'm starting to learn is the Pfizer, the second shot, is not as bad as the, the Mordana. Mordana. Morden, um, Moderna. Moderna. Yeah. So I'm, from what I understand, Moderna, like the second shot, people get really sick on, like they have really bad side effect, like, right. like normal, prototypical. But sure. Pfizer, it's not nearly as bad. Yeah, I, I got the shot. You know, they have you go sit there for 15 minutes, and I was just kind of like shaking my arm. I was like, it felt, it felt a little heavy. A little heavy, yeah. you know, but nothing bad. And then I was fine for a few hours, and then about halfway through my shift at work, my arm just felt achy, especially like right there in the spot. Mm -hmm. um, couldn't sleep on that arm that night. And then kind of all day yesterday, but by the time I went to bed, it felt fine. And now it's. Yeah, I had the arm pain for like a little bit, really didn't sleep on the arm. Um, that's really about it. I mean, I yeah. felt like I couldn't tell if I was lethargic just because I was just tired in general. Like yeah, a little bit, but I was just like, meh. I was I I was yawning a bit more yesterday, but it was also one of those like it's either the shot or I'm well like, still getting the sleep thing unfucked. But well, I like the weird thing, I got it on like I can't remember what day I got. Like yeah. I got it on Thursday, and I think like Friday is like I just felt kind of like blah all day. Yeah. So I don't know if that was a shot or I just felt blah all day. But no, I get my second shot on the twenty fourth. Uh, that's what I'm getting mine. So yeah. super. Where'd you go? Uh, there's a place down, down by where I live, okay. like Kettering Medical Center, like open up like this. Place. Yeah, because uh, I went on their website and yeah. they had like the five places you can sign up on. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, mine's, I went to the one over in Beaver Creek. Okay, that was, I didn't, yeah. like literally the ones like not even like a mile from my house. It's like, oh. Oh, cool. Well, See, I'm, shit. I'm, I'm, I'm literally like, because they have one over right there in Kettering, but I'm literally like at the halfway point between the Kettering one and the Beaver Creek one. Yeah. And I was just like, well. Fuck it, who's got the who's got the earliest appointment? All right, it's, cool. <laughs> it was kind of weird. Like, I think it's really cool, but I don't know. Like, it was so organized, like how they yeah. had it. There was like a, a, a machine that was just like boom. I out. my my appointment was at one. I was in my car by one twenty. Yeah, I felt like my mine was at my appointment was at two. I got there at my appointment was at two twenty. I got there at two. Mm -hmm. I got out at like two twenty five. No, two thirty one. Yeah. Yeah. It was, was, it was so weird. Yeah, because they, they got in. They had me double mask, which I was like, cool, whatever. Um, they checked me in, got the shot, went and sat for 15 minutes, and then I was out the door. There yeah. wasn't super crowded or anything, but they were moving people out of there like, you know, Taco Bell shits. So it, it was, was crazy, dude. Yeah. It's like, damn, this is like put together super fast. And at first I was like, could they at least put a TV on? But then I was out of there so quick. I was like, yeah, fuck it. <laughs> like I was expecting to wait like an hour or two. Like let's oh, legit. Yeah. That's why I, that's why I scheduled mine as early as I did. Cause I was like, I'm going to need like a three hour window before work to make sure I'm good. And 
I like had packed my lunch and had all my shit in my car ready to go to work, and then I was out of there in twenty minutes, and I was like, oh well. You're like, well, uh, um, never mind. Uh, Ended up just going to work early. That was wild. I thought yeah. it was crazy. Like it, it was, it was very impressive how fast they got it going. Yeah, I just can't get wait to get the second one so I can go out and do heroin again. With yeah, people. I uh, I was actually I was gonna go up the weekend the twenty fourth. My mom's going to get my bring my brother home from Kent State because they're bringing him over spring break and then just having him stay home the rest of the semester. Mm. So we were going to go up and like spend it with my grandparents, but then that's when my second shot is. And I was like, oh, fuck, never mind. Yeah. But they're also already, already completely vaccinated. Oh, your so. grandparents are? Oh, yeah. Well, they're, you know, old. So. Yeah. <laughs> and then my little brother, Kent State just set up their vaccination center, but they're only doing the two shots. And so he could get his first shot there, but then they wouldn't. He wouldn't be able to get his second shot there. Mm-hmm. And he kind of he wants to do them at the same place. So he's just waiting until he gets back in town. Gotcha. My sister's being paranoid about it. Like she doesn't. She, she's like she's not sure if she wants to get it or not. I'm, and my my entire family is just kind of looking at her like, really? <laughs> I get the only thing I don't like about because me and my wife are trying to have kids, obviously. Right. Um. They, there's not enough study on what it does to women that are pregnant. Gotcha. That's literally it. So have you guys put a pause on that for the time being or? Yeah. 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 So that's literally like, you're like, like if I get the vaccine, like, because it's, they haven't had enough time to study that. Right. Yeah. So it's literally like. Because that's such a, that's such a niche group to do studies yeah, on. You like have literally to a, like, what if you're pregnant? Like yeah. if you get pregnant while. Because you have to get a bunch of pregnant women who are willing to take the rest. <laughs> yeah. To fuck up their kid or them. And that's, yeah, that's a hard, but yeah. everything, like I've researched the chef, everything. And I yeah. see no issue with that was the only, that's literally the only group that doesn't have yeah. like a, my sister's problem is she's just, she's a little bit of a hypochondriac yeah. and she's, she, she's got like stress and anxiety issues. And, uh, um, so she kind of, she kind of stresses herself out about shit. So I think that's probably got a lot to do with it is just, she's just like blah, 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 unknown side effects. And that just sends her spiraling. So I'm just kind of like. Whatever, fine. I'll wait till there's a single dose in the pill form. I'm just gonna fucking drug your food or some shit. <laughs> I think what's gonna happen is we're gonna have to take the shot every single year. Oh, it's gonna this is gonna be the new flu shot. Yeah. It, which okay, as long as my insurance covered, I don't really care. Yeah. It's and fine. they'll figure out down the road how to make it better and better. Well, because they've been studying the, the the there's a reason that right away they were like, Hey, Lysol wipes kill the coronavirus because this shit's been around a long time it's just this strain is different is fucking different but it's still a coronavirus so they're able to like they didn't have to create special lysol wipes it was already a thing yeah google. can we just lysol our bodies <laughs> <laughs> it's it cracks me up for as much googling as some of the fucking anti-vaxxers do it's like but you didn't google this shit yeah you were you were there you, you just kept reading yeah <laughs> it, was the, it was the next story but no, they they Google it and then skip to page twenty. Because <laughs> when we get to page twenty on Google's, where you get the obscure shit. The, like if you know if you vaccinate your kids, they become elephants. If you use a condom, you are automatically an Al Qaeda. No way. <laughs> that doesn't make any sense at all. Yep, you're killing Americans. You're killing possible American souls. Uh, John Oliver this week was talking about uh, the national, like how fucking high the national deficit is, and. Uh, because because I think ten trillion of it is just our national debt, and then the other because it's over twenty eight trillion. Oh God, yeah. So ten ten of ten of that is just national debt. The other eighteen is what we owe to like fucking China and all that. China, shit. But, oh yeah. <laughs> there was this, there was this commercial for like the people these like promotes promotional ads about you know being like you know trying to solve the debt, and it was these kids doing the pledge of allegiance. They're like, I pledge allegiance to the American debt and the and the country of China that owns us. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's fucking true. They do. They yeah. we owe them so much fucking money. Oh yeah. Well, a lot of folks like because and, and you know because I was still a kid when this shit got started, but it wasn't like because people like to blame it on just the military spending that we had post nine eleven. But it wasn't just the military spending; it was the fact that they increased military spending and cut taxes. Mm-hmm. So you're increasing something we need tax money for, and you're reducing how much tax money is coming in. That really fucked. And me. then they had that stimulus. Remember that? I don't know if you were the. Um, I can't remember what it was called back the, then. The one where they bailed out the uh, the banks and shit. Yeah, was that 2008? 
Cause, yeah, because Americans I, got it too. Yeah, like, I was working at the radio station when that happened. I can't remember yeah. how much I got, but we also got, but we borrowed all that money from China. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah because they bailed out like, uh, like all all the big banks, Fuck all, big all, banks. and fucking. I think the weren't the airlines a part of that too. I don't remember, but I don't, no, fuck big banks. Yeah. So I'm going to say that. Um, everybody used the Chase mobile app. Uh, I'm, <laughs> kidding. I'm kidding. I go to PNC. <laughs> uh, no, nah, I just bag, bag of money under the mattress. That's what they're afraid of. Like, cause I mean, what the, the GameStop and the fucking AMC and like the, mm-hmm. like they're afraid that's going to happen again. Well, they're going to bank bank and they're going to cause hedge funds to fucking completely yeah. get obliterated. There's already a documentary about that on Hulu. Is there that the GameStop shit? I haven't watched Dude, it it's yet. But. Fucking you more you read into that shit. It's fucked up. Well, the, and then you read in, they actually hedge funds is the ones that caused Toys R Us to go bankrupt. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, well, I remember that shit because I, I was pissed. They were the whole they wanted because the part the point is when you short a stock, they short it so much. Mm. If you bankrupt the company, mm. you don't have to pay any taxes. Exactly. It's 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 the producers. It's what happened in the producers. You over borrow over borrow money and then you just have no profits so fuck it you don't have to keep you know you don't have to give any of that money back as far as they're concerned the thing was a flop it's hard but it's also one of those things is it's companies like toys r us and, and granted i didn't know about this at the time but that's what made me so afraid to play the stocks for so long is because uh-huh. i saw companies like toys r us and because when i got out of college is when hostess went under Oh, yeah. And I was like, shit, if a company like Hostess can go under. Now, granted, it was because of labor strikes, but but when they came, but then they eventually came back, and I was running the grocery store at Walmart, but I remember, like, they, they've been cutting corners ever since they came back because they changed all their recipes. Their shit got smaller. Oh, I've noticed that. Um, but that's what made me so afraid to play stocks for the longest time was seeing these huge companies like Hostess go belly up, and I was like, well, fuck. If you invested in Hostess, that company should should have lasted for fucking Twinkies, man. Come on. Well, here, here's the wild thing. I don't, I don't know how long we want to talk about this, but here's the wild Fuck thing. Fuck it. <laughs> so movies. It's our show. Yeah. So here's the thing. Movies are a thing right now. Like movies were really bad last year. Yeah. Uh, just because of COVID. Um, and any movie was like a, it basically right now in the stocks, you pick things that you think are going to be recovery play. Yeah. Like, okay, they're this bad. They're only going to, well, Cinemark. Is it Cinemark? Cinemark? Uh, which one? I just, a, it's a comp, it's a movie company. Cinemark. C- Cinemark's one of the big theater chains. Yeah. yeah. Cinemark, IMAX. Yeah. They've gradually gone up over. Yeah. No negative articles about them at all. Nope. AMC, mm-hmm. because the hedge funds have been shorting them so much. Yeah. Completely, utterly negative article after yeah. negative article. Yeah. Well, because- I'll tell you this. It, it, it was, it was two things. It was that. And it was also the fact that they were, that they were the ones who were, um, who had said because Universal had said they were going to start doing the thing where we're going to drop our movies on streaming the same day they go to theaters and AMC said fine we're not going to carry your movies anymore yeah and then that started to piss people off and but yeah the hedge fund thing especially well one guy wrote it should be a penny stock oh sh- yeah, yeah. <laughs> that he works for hedge funds and you're like yeah like how like my my the whole thing was like how are IMAX and Cinemark or whatever yeah. They've gone from this since the pandemic all the way to where they're at in like the twenties, yeah. high twenties, and because AMC because it was shorted so much mm. that it's like oh. that they, they they saw no hope basically. Well, because they were talking about too, they were talking about how AMC was probably not going to survive, which because it was sh- they shorted they the, sh- the yeah. shit out of it, yeah, because they just wanted their money. Well, and a lot a lot of people were also thinking that. Um, post pandemic that theaters would be fucked anyway because everybody would get so used to streaming everything they wouldn't want to go back to the theater i think but well but here's the thing is is theaters are back to like i think like 40 percent capacity right now depending where you're at yeah depending where you're at well god's godzilla versus kong came out over the weekend they dropped it on hbo max and released it in theaters it made a fuckload of money in theaters i know which just makes me realize people still want to go to the theater. I think ultimately you still want to see that big screen. I do. Yeah. That's why I haven't watched it yet. I mean, um, I'm gonna, but yeah, I want to see Godzilla versus Kong on a big fucking screen. Well, I think what's going to happen, I think because Disney and Disney plus talk about doing yeah. a black widow, but now they're thinking about on just on streaming. Yeah. But I think now they're going to do both. Cause like if fucking Godzilla versus Kong. Yeah. Did that well. Black Widow definitely will. It's, yeah. a, it's a Marvel well, movie. Adam, Adam Aaron is the CEO mm-hmm. of 
AMC. And now they call people, I guess I would say me because I'm so invested in AMC <laughs> right. and the meme sucks. They call us apes. <laughs> <laughs> and so he's like, you know, and then he knows if it wasn't for like the Reddit mm -hmm. wall street bets and like that community, mm -hmm. AMC wouldn't, he knows that. Yeah. He's flat out. And they're an enemy. He's like, I'm, I'm more of an ape guy myself. Like I'm not a lizard guy. Like I'm an, I'm like an oh, ape dude. Jesus. <laughs> he's all I about, ain't no, I ain't no scab. <laughs> yeah. He's all about like fucking like, about support it's weird because like he makes a buku amount of money but he knows that ultimately like his business would be completely under if it wasn't for oh yeah that and he's all like he he's been gone on record since last year's like yeah they're sorting the shit out of us they're trying to bankrupt us mm -hmm. and now i think he's just kind of like this is my middle finger like fuck you hedge funds like yeah, this, no is, shit. this is what i'm gonna do and he literally and he's like i'm more of an ape guy i don't like lizards and i think he's like, i think it's kind of ironic and the <laughs> and the time of meme stocks the first movie that come out to do would be God, kong God versus, versus godzilla <laughs> king kong versus godzilla <laughs> and i'm an ape guy and i was just like oh shit i was like daddy daddy aaron knows what's going on <laughs> It's, I, yeah, it's a very interesting community. I'm really curious to see what's going to happen between with AMC, Cinemark, and Regal because those are the big three. Um, you know, getting to like next year because you know because I know Warner Brothers has already said they're just going to drop everything this year on on HBO Max. Yeah, Black Widow is going to be telling because they're going to do that. They're going to do that thing where they drop it on the streaming, but you got to like pay the thirty, 30 bucks, bucks to be yeah, able to watch it, which everyone's bitching about. And I'm like, it's thirty bucks for a movie that you now have. Yeah, as My, opposed to going to the theater where you're going to spend around a hundred bucks for everybody to get tickets and snacks, and you get to watch it once. My thing is on that too is just like all those movies. Like I feel like I want to see those movies like for real. Oh yeah, I want to see on the big screen itself. Yeah, I want to see Black Widow in a big fucking screen. But I also wanted to see Black Widow like ten years ago. So I think I, I think because because the movie means nothing. Yeah, because you know what happens at the end, unless it's a, <laughs> unless it's like a fucking the only thing I can think of, unless yeah. it's like a weird like alternate universe. Or, I, that's what I'm hoping for. I don't know. I'm gonna watch like. Well, they just dropped the mo a, a trailer for Loki. Well, for well for Loki, Loki yeah, yeah, but also for um for Black Widow on like Thursday or Friday, and so like we know it takes place. Before I think pre Infinity War, it's either pre Infinity War or pre End Game. I mean, obviously, it's not after End Game. That would be crazy. <laughs> this is my ghost. <laughs> but, well, but with with Loki, Loki's dealing with the fact that there's like timelines fragmented because so I'm like, shit could happen. I don't know. That's what I'm saying. Because when does Black Widow come out? Uh, July, I think is when they're dropping. I think Loki. I wonder if Loki comes out before that. Uh, I'm gonna look that up. That's because if Loki finishes before that, that means they could go alternate universe. See what I'm saying? That's true. Loki drops. Does it have a release date yet? June 11th. Black Widow drops. July 9th, same weekend. No, June 11th, July 9th. That's oh, I'm sorry. G I'm sorry. June, uh, sorry. So Loki drops a month before Black Widow. Um, they couldn't, I don't know how many shows it's going to be. If it's eight, well, like I don't know because, the, cause, I mean, they have said that, that all the Disney stuff is, the Disney Plus stuff is going to play into the universe, into the universe which, which we've seen, spoiler alert, if you haven't seen already, WandaVision and even the first three of, of Falcon Winter Soldier. I've only seen half of the first episode of Falcon Winter Soldier. Yeah, I kind of want to binge it. I, I will say because I'm, I'm I'm three into it now, so I've kind of already started. So I kind of have to just keep going. Mm -hmm. um, it's it's very MCU. Like it feels like an MCU movie. Maybe. Yeah. That's what I felt like. I think Wandavision was just like it was so different. Yeah, which is kind of it was cool. It's like Wandavision was almost directed like Quentin Tarantino. That's what I felt like Wandavision was. You know what? You're not wrong. Yeah. <laughs> it did kind of feel like because it was. It was it was a different genre every week, mm -hmm. and yeah, so it, it had that that Tarantino feel to it. But no, Winter, I mean, uh, the Falcon and Winter Soldier, um, fucking George Saint Pierre. Oh, I know. Is in the first episode. Like, I know. Right. That's as far as I know. I don't know if he's in yeah. anymore. So I'm like, wait, is that George Saint? Well, and they call him George, I think. Because well, he was in uh, Winter Soldier. 
Was he? I the, don't the, remember him in Winter Soldier. At the very beginning, that first mission on the boat that they that Cap and Black Widow were on, uh-huh. the guy that he fights at the end of that, that's George St. You're Pierre. right. It's the same character. You're fucking right. I forgot yeah. about that. How the fuck did he get in the MCU? I forgot he's an MCU. It's, it's something about, because I think it was just the, 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 the coincidence of the character he's playing is this French-Canadian fist fighter and they were like well we know a guy and he because they figure well fuck it it's for two scenes so doesn't like not like he has to I act, feel like now yeah. it's gonna be like seven seven degrees of MCU <laughs> like you can take any <laughs> any actor and, and seven link him to an actor in the fucking MCU universe oh of course uh, especially because like now we've got Owen Wilson is in, I, is in Loki, I, was which like, I was like are you fucking kidding me <laughs> like how, how much are they paying everybody oh my god because these these the shit cannot have a big budget I mean uh, well Winter Soldier looks like it fucking does from well, what I've seen the first episode looks like is like legit like movie quality i will say because it definitely feels really i mean it's the first episode i was like this is a scene out of you could have told me this is a scene out of civil war and i would have fucking believed you yeah so like the actual yeah. civil war not no, yeah. <laughs> he's got a musket um imagine like fucking i'm gonna fucking shoot you again <laughs> god damn it i'm going back and watching watching uh star trek next generation from the beginning right now and uh there's an episode where they like get thrown into some multi-dimensional shit and there's these aliens but they have musket musket guns but they shoot they have to still load them but they shoot lasers and and data's just kind of like i don't uh, what <laughs> this makes no sense this is dumb <laughs> um but yeah so uh, so loki's gonna be it's just six episodes um and it's five weeks separating it from black widow and if they do if they do what they I don't know. Sometimes with these shows, they'll drop like the first two on the same day. Yeah. So I don't know. Maybe. I doubt. It. Honestly, I doubt it. I kind of feel like Scarlett Johansson's moved on. She's trying to play every race in every movie. That's she true. Can. So, uh, I, <laughs> did you ever, you ever watch College Humor's videos? Long time ago. Um, I found one. Something. One of them got one of the old ones got recommended to me. And I was like, fuck, I forgot about college humor. I went back. They're still putting shit out. Apparently that's impressive. Yeah. Um, and it was still pretty funny. And one, one of them was a guy pretending to be Scarlett, who is Scarlett Johansson's agent. And like, and she, he was like, Hey, I got this one. You're playing, you're playing uh, Mary Todd Lincoln. She's like, I'll only do it. If, if it's a, re- if it's a race reversal where Abe Lincoln and Mary Todd are both black. And I have a Chinese baby. And it was like, she's like, because I'm an actor and I need to spread my wing. Because <laughs> she played, what did she play? She played Ghost in the Shell. She was, was in Ghost in the Shell. Show. I, I never saw that. I never, I it, I know it was based on an anime. So, and I never watched the anime. So, I, it was, I, I never, I didn't really give a shit. Um, but she did, well, she did that, which pissed a lot of people off. And then she was supposed to be, she got cast in this one movie where she, she was supposed to play like a post-op. Uh, uh, male to female transgender uh-huh. and uh, everybody was like no and she ended up backing out of it because she caught a lot of shit for it but like well, I guess my thing is like can you really give an actor shit for they like hey we want you to play this role if they accept it because I mean she could have said no that's true but it's like but at the same time like my thing is on this for example mm-hmm. that could have been an Oscar yeah, like Good. straight up. Yeah, I mean, like it's true. Like, well, it didn't work for Eddie for Eddie Redmayne. That's true too. He did Danish Girl. He was great as great as he was, in but he was movie. nominated. He was, but also you look at Jeffrey Tambor who who uh, won for Transparent. Yeah, and Louis Anderson who won a go. He won a, he won an Emmy for. Um, what was that? Baskets. Effect? Baskets. Yeah, he won an Emmy for Baskets, and people were. Like, it wasn't that they were saying that they weren't good, but they were kind of like, yeah, but, you know, yeah. could have got a trans actor. I just want to know how many, yeah. are there a lot of trans actors? I don't know. I, I don't know. Uh, I kind of, I kind of. Because, like, my I, thing is, like, the people, like, the trans act, some people might be trans that don't want you to know they're trans. Right. You know what I mean? Well, because you have, like, you know, at, 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 then Ellen, now Elliot Page. Yeah. And that you have, so, you know, Laverne Cox. She's um, great. Laverne Cox is amazing. Yeah, so great. Um, although that 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 Rocky Horror thing she did sucked. I I never watched. I I, I love I love her though so much. She's uh, fantastic. She, can, she yeah she can you can cast her as Batman and I'll watch it. Yeah. 
That'd be a great movie. <laughs> I'm Batman. <laughs> I'm Batman. <laughs> That'd be fucking funny. I, I'm never, I was never a big Orange is the New Black fan, but I mean, she was... Her and Kate Mulgrew were the two best parts of that fucking yeah, show. Yeah, I, I agree. I wasn't a big... I tried to get into it, but they were the only ones that kind of made me want to watch it. Yeah. Because I was like, this Cause, is... Because I hate the main... I hate... What's her name? The blonde who's the main character. Couldn't stand her. The story's stupid with the her. The story's dumb. Um, everything with Lauren Prep on... It's like, we get to see Donna naked. Great. Cool. Awesome. I still wanted a better show. Yeah. <laughs> you know, the, people just loved it. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Yeah. Because it ran for like, what, like eight seasons or something like that? Something like that. But Laverne, I mean, yeah, Laverne, Ka- I mean, that's what made her a fucking star was everybody was like, holy shit, she's amazing. And talk about a career resurgence for Kate Mulgrew, who hadn't done anything since Star Trek Voyager. So that's true. And, I mean, I, I mean, yeah, you're right. And I didn't even recognize her when I saw her. I was like, I couldn't place her and then I was like get the fuck out of here really she was really fucking good in it yeah like, she was she was great um well, I know Lori Petty was in there at one point I don't know who that is um tank girl uh fucking she, a she, she was she's in there at some point goddamn tank girl holy uh, shit is that a reference that's a I hate I hate how much all that's again this is why I play movie trivia it's it's the talk about a movie that like pops up on basic cable or broadcast every once in a while and i'm kind of like i haven't seen this in a while does it still suck i feel like tango or girl should be a porn <laughs> it, it sounds like one yeah. and honestly at times watching it it looks, it looks like, like one. one yeah <laughs> it's fucking iced tea anyways porn. if you guys never seen tank girl it's watch tank it is an experience yes tank girl is one of those movies that's like so bad it's good mm-hmm. um fucking iced tea is the fucking kangaroo dude and Na- very young Naomi Watts, Michael McDonald signed on for this shit, or Malcolm McDonald rather, Michael McDonald. That'd be hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> no mountain high enough, that girl. <laughs> oh. it, God damn, that would have made the fucking movie. Holy shit! That's also a one, riot. <laughs> that's also one of those movies that's very much from that era of 80s pulpy comic book movies like judge dread and oh fuck judge dread god yeah. that was wow. like i the, knew you'd say that such a bad movie. i am <laughs> my, my favorite my favorite moment in that movie though it also, also fucking rob schneider's in it uh my favorite moment in that movie is oh yeah rob schneider <laughs> yeah. i had to think about for you yeah, 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 uh, armand asante who plays his brother at one point he's like you betrayed the law and armand, armand asante just goes <laughs> I, was, I was like i don't get it but i fucking love that moment <laughs> was it i like the uh the other one better oh the carl urban one yeah oh that movie was fucking great fantastic dude it, uh it, fucking bombed at the box office did it really it did it made like no but everyone was like well he's also he was a no-name actor he was time. a no-name actor it was based on a movie that was like universally loathed yeah um and it was it was it came out during that big like 3d when the 3d hype was really going on because there's a lot of like like the slow-mo scenes and shit which i'm sure look great in 3d but uh, that, see you never see his face in that movie no you never do yeah that probably also hurt it yeah, can you imagine like? But people are people were also pissed about Stallone's because in the comics you never see his face. That's true too. Because in the in the in Stallone's movie he never wears the fucking helmet. He wears it in like the opening scene, and that's it. Because it's Stallone, and you got to see all that. I guess <laughs> Stallone rhymes with alone. Um, which he's gonna be fucking King Shark in this new Suicide Squad movie. He's King Shark. He's King Shark. Oh shit! Yeah. He plays King Shark. He plays King Shark. Now, <laughs> uh, now, doesn't that look like what's his face directed it? It absolutely fucking does. Yeah. And I love. Well, I love in the trailer from the horribly twisted mind of James Gunn. And I'm like, yeah, holy shit, that looks exactly <laughs> like James Gunn directed that movie. If you have a vanity license plate, we will kill you. No, no, we won't. If you cough without covering your mouth, no, we won't. But that is not an invitation for you to cough without covering your mouth. <laughs> well, that dude, what's his face? I can't think of his name. Um, the actor. Yeah, I. Joel, uh, Joel Kinnaman. Yeah. yeah. So he was in one of my favorite shows. It was on, I don't, I watch it on Netflix. I don't know if it's on Netflix anymore. It wasn't a Netflix original, but Netflix bought it and did like the last season. Uh-huh. It's called The Killing. Oh, I've heard of that. It's good. The first two seasons are great. The third season's like, eh. Okay. But like, I loved him in that show. And I, I never watched Altered Carbon either. 
I I tried to watch Altered Carbon because I'm such a big Blade Runner fan, and everybody told me I would like it. And to me, it just kind of felt like that is my cat. What is your problem? Nothing. <laughs> um, it kind of just it, it, we, like, like, kind of going off the conversation we had last week. It kind of felt like 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 network TV Blade Runner. Yeah, it's kind of watered down Blade Runner. Um, but I know he's supposed. I know he's in it. Um, everybody, anybody I know who doesn't like Blade Runner likes Altered Carbon. Gotcha. I so. I've never liked Blade Runner. I tried to get in Blade Runner so many times. I love Blade Runner. I don't know why. Like it's a top like movie of all time. It's a, and I just can't like I don't know what it is. I have tried to watch it so many times. I was like I don't. Couple of guys, a couple of guys at work were asking me about about it over, over the weekend, and and the way I described it to them was it's. So part of the problem is when you watch it, it seems super cliche in terms of like sci-fi cliches, but that's because it was the film that kind of got a lot of those going. Yeah. That now they're cliches because of that movie. It's really, it's thinking man sci-fi. And, and I agree with that. Yeah. I also think it needs to be seen in a theater. Yeah, it does. And it also doesn't help that there's seven different versions of it. I did not know that. Yeah, because Ridley, it was a Ridley Scott movie, yeah. so... But there's one that's called the final cut, which is kind of like known as like the definitive, like that's the version you should watch. Because like the theatrical version had this weird voiceover by Harrison Ford kind of going off because it's a it's a, you know, a a noir style film. So he had that kind of the hard boiled detective narration you get and like the the dams will show up in my office. But you could tell Harrison Ford didn't give a shit. Yeah. Yeah. and just some weird scenes that kind of fit in. And so there's just like, a, there's been a lot of re-edits, but the one that's called like the final cut is kind of the one that everybody says, which I agree with is the one that's kind of the best version of it. Um, and like most eighties movies, it has, it has Daryl Hannah in it. Cause she's in like, she's, she's in like every fucking eighties movie. Mm-hmm. But, and then the sequel is really good. The sequel is just really fucking long. <laughs> that's what the Ryan Gosling. That's what I, was like. I thought he should have gotten a fucking, Oscar nomination for that. Really? Honestly, he was he Ryan Gosling's one of those actors. I tell people, I was like, that man can act with his eyes better than anybody. Yeah, you're right. He, you're really not like I, don't know, honestly, I can't remember like a movie he's actually bad in. It took me a long time to come around on Ryan Gosling just because for the longest time he was like one of those other Hollywood pretty boys, like in the realm of like a DiCaprio or something like that. Mm-hmm. And he kept making shit like the Notebook, where I just wasn't my cup of tea. Although here's the thing about the Notebook, yeah. I, there was a time in my life every single time I watched the Notebook, yeah. I got laid. Well, yeah, no shit. Because like, even if I watch it like by myself that <laughs> night, I was getting, it was really weird. It was bizarre. I was like, if I, and then got laid. I don't know. Turns out it was the porno version, the Notebook. The uh, Notebook. <laughs> um, yeah, but, but I, I thought like. Blade Runner's not for everybody. I want to pull up his IMDb now. It's it's because I liked him in that uh, that first man movie from a couple years ago where he plays Neil Armstrong. I haven't seen that one. It's good. It's it's slow because it's and it's long, but it's it's not like a lot of people didn't like it because it wasn't like Apollo 13, which was like a like it almost felt like an action movie because it was really fast paced and had a lot of like heavy drama and explosions and stuff like that. It was it was none of that. You actually very rarely see the spaceship from the outside you mm. spend most of it actually just inside to kind of get that kind of more realistic experience of what it was like for them um but again going to like what i was saying with him acting with his eyes because like neil armstrong was a very kind of just kind of cold almost like not like emotionless but just he wasn't very emotional and so, but he does a lot of, there's a lot of moments in the movie where you can just see what he's thinking and feeling based on like what he's, how he's moving his eyes. And he does that in Blade Runner 2049 because he's playing uh, an android. So you kind of have to see him processing. Oh, he's, he's an android. He's an android in the movie who works for the police. So yeah, it's, I, I now love Ryan Gosling, although fuck La La Land. I like La La Land. I hated La La Land. Um, I'm trying to think. Uh, uh, nice guys. I haven't seen. But I heard it's great. Nice guys is amazing. Nobody saw it. Um, <laughs> big short. He was good in the Big Short. Everybody was good in the Big Short. Uh, the Place Beyond the Pines. He was good in, but he wasn't in for a long. No, he was not. The Ides of March. Haven't seen it. Great. Crazy Stupid Love. Just good. That's the one with Emma Stone, right? Yeah. Yeah, that's a good movie. Drive. Drive is fucking great. Drive is fantastic. Yeah. Uh, I forgot he was in Remember the Titans. Yeah. B- Lars and the Real Girl. I love oh that yeah, I forgot about that one. The Notebook, Murder by I remember Murder by Numbers. Yeah, 
Um, Young Hercules. Uh, I remember that show. Other than that, I mean, that's kind of... Yeah, there were talks about him being Batman at one point. No. Yeah, it didn't happen. I would never. <laughs> it was one of those. Years. It was one of those shortlist names being tossed around about the same time as Ben Affleck was. It was like him, Ben Affleck, and Army Hammer were the three names getting tossed around. Army. Ar- yeah. Can you imagine if Army Hammer was? And what happened to his he was career? Supposed to be. Yeah. There was a the, the the there was supposed to be a George Miller Justice League movie back in like two thousand three, mm-hmm. and he was an Army Hammer had been cast as Batman. That would have blown up in their face. Yeah, and absolutely the- fucking would. That's the reason it didn't get made. The script was shit. And then all this shit that he said uh, about Stanley and about uh, comic book movies and shit. What did he say? You know, he, first of all, he was he was like talking shit about people when Stan Lee died. He was talking shit about people posting pictures with Stan Lee, saying like they were like fake fans using a dead man to like get notoriety online. I'm like, they're fucking celebrating like the life, the of, life of a great I, man. Stan Lee changed a lot of actors' lives. Stanley well, changed entertainment. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. <laughs> Stan Lee basically did more than what Star Wars did. Oh, there, I, I you to, could say that I'm trying to think about the timelines here of, of which came first Star Wars or Marvel. But, but even from a movie perspective, yeah. Stan oh, yeah. Lee changed like the his ideas changed the game of movies because what how many movies was it for Infinity? Infinity War. Oh, End Infinity game. War? Yeah. 20 something movies like yeah. to make 20 oh, something movies years. relevant yeah and to show up at to every literally single an fucking end game. one of them there was an <laughs> end game after 20 like literally yeah and well i mean with the creation of spider-man or fantastic four was the first one he did yeah like what if there was just a family of superheroes and and then he created spider-man and then the idea of the using characters like the x-men to tackle you know, to tackle like the the race the race issues that were slash still going on. Yeah, um, that's why I love it when people get pissed off about politic, social issues, and comic book shit. I'm like, y'all ever read X Men? Yeah, that's but that is there's, there's a reason that you know because because Magneto was Malcolm X, Professor X is uh, is is Martin Luther King. Yeah, you know? stuff like that. Yeah, but he, I will say, Army Hammer wasn't taking a shot at Stan Lee. He was taking a shot at, at the people that trying to people. So no, Bill Mars the one took a shot at Stan Lee. What did um, Bill Maher say? Oh, you don't know about that? No. When Bill Maher, when Stan Lee died, I wish Bill Maher had died. Um, I fucking hate Bill Maher. Before this, um, he's a great interviewer though. Um, he basically, as part of his opening monologue on Real Time, just shit on Stan Lee about what for because because he kept calling he kept saying he's the guy who made comic books real we're all sad because the guy that made spider-man died great cool we have a guy whose whole career is that now adults think comic books are cool i'm like go fuck yourself and everybody gave him shit and then on his next episode he fucking doubled down like two monologues in a row just shit and this was the week he fucking died and it's like Fuck you, dude. You know, he's made his entire career off shitting on things that you're not supposed to sh- like. Yeah. Not as- but this one, this one, I think, just it just pushed people too far. I, well, I, like, I kind of cried when Stan Lee died. I because, fucking did. Because I was like, holy shit. Like, that's like part of my childhood. And then, and then God, fuck, 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 uh, fuck Kevin Smith for making me cry. Because him and him and Stan Lee were, I mean, he tight. They like, were tight. I mean, he was like a second father to Kevin Smith. Um, one of my favorite Kevin Smith stories is he's talking about how they were doing like some some writing event or something at, at his house and Stan Lee was going to be a surprise guest and Stan Lee got the days mixed up and uh-huh. he showed up a, a day early uh-huh. and he's like and I was in bed having sex with my wife and all of a sudden my my intercom doorbell rings and I stop and I'm like hello and he's like he's like Kevin Stan I'm, I'm here for the thing he's like Stan, that's tomorrow night. He's like, oh, oh, my bad, my bad. He's like, yeah, listen, Stan, I gotta let you go. I'm kind of in my wife right now. <laughs> and Stan Lee was like, go get him, Tiger. <laughs> <laughs> oh God. But yeah, that was the one. I think like everyone, because it was always a, a thing with Bill Maher. Like, oh, what's he gonna fucking talk about? But this was this was like somebody that was like universally loved. Uh, there's I nobody mean. that fucking hated. Yeah, Stan Lee. Like he was. It, it was kind of like. When you know, like w- when I went and watched the uh, the, the uh, Mister Rogers documentary, like you always kind of hope that like 
nothing is ever going to come out that he was like doing some seedy shit or whatever behind the scenes like Mr. Rogers and to this at this point that man is you can't touch that man nah. and you kind of and Stan Lee was kind of the same way like he was married to his wife for like 70 fucking years and you know and was just so so in love with her and and just everything that he did um in his comics for you know touching on real life issues and up to the day he died he would always comment about stuff like that oh my god rosie (laughs) um that's why i shut you in the other room when i do this usually so it was one of those like it was just stanley was one of those guys it was like don't don't fucking talk about stanley i don't there's no reason to bash the man i can't i think maybe he just you know, didn't draw a line correctly at the one of the original episodes. I don't. I, I don't. But then to also double down the next week. Yeah, yeah, that's just Bill Maher being a fucking cunt. Yeah, which is what he's fucking famous. All right, folks, that'll do it for this week's episode of The Basement Lounge. If you want to follow us online, you can follow Mike Wells on Twitter and Instagram at Mike WTF Wells. And you can follow me, Mike Shea, at Mr. Mike Shea on Twitter and Instagram as well. You can also follow this show on Twitter and Instagram at TBL underscore pod. And uh, we got a brand new website under construction for you guys with uh, some cool new stuff coming down the line as well. So stay tuned for that. In the meantime, we'll catch you guys again next week with another episode. And until then, as always, live well, rock on, take care, and bye-bye.